this review of these books that are great to learn oil painting from. And these are books that I've gone through either through a good portion of it or have actually used some of the techniques that I've learned and the ideas that I've learned. And with that said, uh, these are all the books displayed here. And one great thing about these books is that they're very accessible. And I'm going to go through and talk about a few major areas uh, as I go through each of these books. Why I think they're great for learning oil painting. Um, what I think that the person get out of it. And of course, you know, I'm going to address the uh, learning level because we're all you know, you might have an artist in your life that you're getting this book for, you're getting it for yourself, and you might be in different places with your art experience. And I am uh, live streaming and on two different cameras, so if I start to look at different areas, that's probably why, but, you know, welcome. And if you're looking to become an artist, a painter, whether it be oil painting or, um, or if you decide to use acrylic, a watercolor. I still think that these books are very valuable, although I primarily use these books uh, to learn oil painting. So first off, uh, the first book that we have on our on our page here is Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. That's Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. Fantastic book. Actually, um, I don't remember if there was a cover on here, but I probably took it off or it might just be an all black book. And that said, uh, this is a great book on drawing. Now, why would anybody review a book on drawing for painting if it's not if it's not obvious? It's because drawing is a fundamental skill to painting. If you can draw, you can paint. It, that's that's one of those things that I believe, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know. It's not just the skill of drawing itself, right? It's the idea of being able to quickly come up with compositions, to quickly come up with, with concepts, to constantly be able to come up with an idea really quickly on paper and being able to ultimately capture what it is that you want on paper. That is one of the most powerful things you could do, especially if you want to come up with your own designs and things. And the, of course the painting in itself becomes a whole different um, skill that you have to develop. You have to learn about colors, you have to learn about light and everything. But at the same time, the skills that you gain from drawing are gonna be very powerful. And I wanna say from this book, you can learn so much that's gonna help you as a painter. And what I love about this book is that it isn't just about drawing from like a technical standpoint. It's not just about drawing like Hey, you know, use a ruler and look at it from this way and use a ruler and like draw it out. It's nothing like that. It re she really gives a ton of great and creative exercises that help you to really develop your creativity as someone who draws. So great book, Betty Edwards, uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. That is our first book that we're going to look at today or that we're, we've looked at. And with that said, we're going to go ahead and place this on the side now. Our next book here is, maybe I'll put this on a side so we can still see it. I wonder how I'm going to be able to organize this. I should have thought of this sooner, but um, let's see if I can find some space to, to place these books as we go. So that, let me see. Here you go. I'm just going to place it behind here. And our next book is Great French Paintings from the Barnes Foundation. Now, this is more of like a, like a coffee top book. But ultimately, what I want to share, the idea that I want to share from this book is more so the idea of help finding a book that if you're looking for a gift, I mean, it's the holiday season. Happy holidays, everybody. If you're looking for a gift for somebody, then if you can find a book from one of their famous painting eras, whether it be the Renaissance, whether it be French Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Early Modern, whether it be, you know, Jackson Pollock, those days. Um, if you're buying this for somebody else, then 
just considering the the uh, the holiday season, you know, you don't need to buy this book, right? Great French paintings, but it can be very helpful to find a specific painting uh, or a book from a specific era. So if you know the era that the person that you're buying for really loves, then get a painting from that era. And of course, this book, you know, one of my favorite eras is Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, Early Modern. So you can really start to get an idea. You know, you get a lot of ideas. You know, what these books really give value, where these books really provide a lot of value is helping your the, yourself or the artist that you're buying it for get a lot of ideas for painting, develop styles. And of course, if you're just getting it for a non-artist, hey, this is a great, like, tabletop book for sure. So we're going to set this one aside. Again, the, the main idea here is let's get, adjust this camera. All right, the main idea here is to get a book from the era that uh, the painting time period that the person that you're buying for really loves. And that could be Renaissance, classical, ancient, you know, ancient Egyptian or whatever that is. So we're going to put that down right here. And our next book is an exciting one. This is a very, now this is a beautiful, beautiful book. It is called Classical Painting Atelier. And this is by Juliet Aristides. I hope I pronounced that right. And she has her own atelier, which is a classical painting school. And I need to make a quick adjustment here. So Juliet Aristides, I, I believe her name is probably French or something, but um, really great book. It has a lot of beautiful artwork. She has her own school in it, and, and I think she uses uh, paintings as examples. She uses a lot of examples from her students in this book. So her students are very talented, talented students. And now my thing about this book is that it does not feel like it's for beginners. Now, there are some like step-by-step -step tutorials, but where I think this book really comes in valuable isn't um, the step-by-step -step or the ideas that you get from it, because she teaches like, you know, the most professional way, like I want to say the most technical, classic, uh, classical, fundamental way of painting, most classical academic way of painting that... You know, people tend to highly admire, you know, very realistic, very classical styles. Um, and that's what her school teaches. And in the beginning of her, of her uh, work, in the beginning of her book, she basically says uh, something like, oh, you know, this isn't about the abstract world. You know, we're, let's, let's take a step back in time. And, you know, go back to the roots of like classical painting style. So, you know, very classical. And where I think that this book comes in valuable, not just for the beginner, but, you know, obviously she, she has a very good school. But um, for the experts, this is a lot of value. But for the beginner, it gives a very high level overview of painting skills. So by high level, I mean, you're not going to be you know, struggling to learn the technical skills, you're going to learn like the big concepts like composition and how to do studies and how to do your research on paintings and how to study and things like that. So that's where you really get the value from this book, as opposed to just say, hey, you know, draw this, draw it in the circle. And then this is where the light shining. And then when the light shines this way, you know, paint it like this. So it's not like a technical heavy book. It's like really big picture, how to look at art, how to study it mo most of all, and how to really learn from the great masters of our time. And she has a school she teaches. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure this probably uses the majority of the techniques that she teaches in her school. So it's really up to you to learn and apply the skills. But great book, if you wanna learn how to paint classically, um, this is fantastic, fantastic read. Whether you're an expert or a beginner, even if you're a beginner and you're not looking to learn how to paint classically, I think this book is very valuable because it talks a lot about you know the composition, the studies. Even if you're studying abstract work, um, it can be very valuable to know some of the color concepts and ideas.
that are, are, are in this. Um, if anything, I would say that this is a great book, not just on classical painting or learning classical art, but on how to study art, um, how to study art that you want to create. So that's where a lot of the value of this comes from. So Classical Painting Atelier by Juliette Aristides. Aristides. And here, let's see what's next. We have the techniques of the great masters. And I got to take this little thing off right here. The techniques of the great masters. And this is a fantastic book. This is a very thick painting book. And it is, uh, it has the techniques of the great masters. So, you know, we're looking at 1300s to the 1800s and the impressionist and modern masters up until 1980 Henri Matisse, Picasso, uh, Bosch, Caravaggio, uh, Renoir, Manet, Morisseau, uh, Signac, uh, let's see, ends up around Sol Lewitt, Lichtenstein, uh, all these Jean du Buffet. All right, so Jackson Pollock, so many great masters, and it goes over their techniques in detail. So it'll. So this book's amazing for the artists that you're that you're buying this for, whether you're buying it for yourself. I mean, hey, thank you so much, Brian Skira Two W. Thanks for letting letting me know here. So just in review of this book, right? I'll just give you a sample. So here is. Um, Edouard Manet. So Edouard Manet, not to be confused with Monet, which he was very upset about in his lifetime that he had a, uh, a counterpart that was competing with him named Monet with just a one vowel difference. But, you know, it gives you a little biography of the painter and then it shows the steps that they potentially went through to create their paintings. So, and then, you know, it's not just one or two pages, but sometimes, you know, they get multiple pages. Each artist gets multiple pages of their uh, of their work so multiple pages and let's see we'll go through let's pick another random artist here and who is this we have landed on Klee so Paul Klee so here's some a bio of Paul Klee and then it provides you a painting that they're gonna ev evaluate and then they start telling you about some of his work and it tells you like a rundown of how they did it. So let's see. Dominant staining hue of rose, opaque areas of gray, hatch strokes painted in watercolor. So, you know, it really goes into detail about the techniques that they use. This is an absolutely amazing, amazing book. I mean, these are, it, it, this is not just for like the master artist or whatever. Um, it's great to learn the techniques of the great masters, but where this book is just absolutely amazing is it gives little like for for every single artist that they have in here it really does a great job of breaking down their their painting styles but not in too much detail right there could be a little too much detail where it's like hard to follow but this one you know evaluates a couple little things that you can that if you have an artist in your life they can start to apply into their own work that they can just add something fun that they can just add from any of these artists and this is andre duran and we've got, uh, let's see. Okay, this is Van Gogh, of course. You, know, you can't have a master's book without Van Gogh. So it has a study of Van Gogh and some of his techniques. So lots of great stuff in this book. I would say that this is both great for a beginner or a master and not just painters, but artists in general, because this just gives all sorts of ideas like you know, and artists need inspiration, not just uh, not just teaching or advice. So, you know, there's just so much information and ideas in this book that can provide inspiration for the painter or artist in your life. But this is primarily a painting book and absolutely fantastic, fantastic choice for the artist in your life. And we're going to go ahead and set this down. Uh, so this says a unique guide to the 70, 70, to the techniques of over 70 of the world's greatest painters. So definitely for painting, but I'm sure a lot of people can get ideas from this, whether they're a painter or not. All right.
So this is a, a classic, um, well, I wouldn't say classic, it's fairly new. Let's see, this is published in like 2000 something. Let's go, doesn't say, I don't think. Uh, 2006, so you know, this isn't classical painting. I would say that this is more modern styles of painting, modern techniques. And, you know, this is uh, the oil painting course you've always wanted, a guided lesson for beginners and experienced artists by Kathleen Lochin Stager. And this is a, you know, this it says it's a guided lessons for beginners and experienced artists. And I would say that this is a very comprehensive book that covers a lot of very important topics for painters. I mean, it really goes into detail from the beginning of like, you know, the simple stuff, like what's, what type of uh, support you should use, which is what you paint on, how to use oil paints, materials, recommended colors, all those things. So everything you could possibly need to know to really get started, oil painting is on here. If you're using like acrylic or watercolor, it might be different. But where I really like this book is it's pretty condensed. And of course it goes through the basic exercises. You know, we all know the basic exercises, right? Painting basic, basic forms and shapes. And then you move on to like still lifes and things like that. And you move on to landscapes and you move on to like more advanced subject matter. But this is really good. This is a really good book that really does a good job of giving you like step by step. Now, you know, as some person, I'm, I'm, I happen to be very critical of anything that says step by step. And I would say, and when I say critical, I mean like if it misses, if I feel like I'm reading something and it missed a step, like I didn't really catch the idea in full. I didn't really feel like, um, you know, they, they, they fully explained the concept, then, you know, I, I usually, uh, that upsets me. Um, but I would say that this book does a great job of, of being as in depth as you really possibly can. But even more than that, there's a lot of great ideas of, you know, beginner paintings and, and ways that you can just get started, you know, beginning ideas. And it really takes you from like just painting basic, uh, basic still lifes to painting some more advanced things like landscapes very quickly. And uh, this book can be quite challenging. Like the first half is really just learning and studying colors, which is very important. You know, getting your colors together, learning it, understanding how colors interact. And then everything else is really just more advanced projects that get uh, more and more complex or more and more color theory. So this covers a lot of very interesting and important things. Very great. Not just for like a beginner painter, but like, you know, anybody who's going to be studying um, studying painting needs to know some of the ideas. So this is a great book. This is very highly recommended in, in oil painting circles. But uh, as far as that goes, um, I've had the opportunity to read through it and I do think it does a great job. So this is the oil painting course you've always wanted and it's written very well and sectioned off by different uh, exercises and stuff. So great book here, covers a lot of important ideas. Next book, this is also highly recommended, but it is a book called, oh, whoops, here we go. It is a book called A La Prima by Richard Schmidt. And he is a well-known uh, well artist who got a lot of rewards. And this is a highly recommended book if you go on forums and stuff. And, you know, a la prima basically means in one sitting. So, you know, anyone who really wants to learn how to, how to paint and complete a painting in like one sitting, which isn't the traditional style of oil painting because oil painters typically, they go for days, weeks, maybe months to work on a project and, you know, they'll develop their painting. But a la prima is a beautiful, beautiful book. The only thing... I will say about this book is I do not think that it's for beginners. Although he has a lot of theory, like I would say that he's got a lot of theory in this book and theory is good. Um, theory is good as far as understanding and, and studying art and painting, but, and he has another book. Maybe, maybe this is why, but um, this, this book, it's called the, the other book is called the techniques of Richard Smith. So this book is just called A La Prima, 
which I think he wanted to sell, sell his book, uh, the techniques on another book, which I don't have. And he wanted to basically go over the, the, his thoughts, his ideas, his philosophies, his way of thinking through painting in this book. So I will say that this is good for a mindset, a thought process, a way of like learning and evaluating how you're going to tackle the subject uh, as a painter, as an oil painter. But I don't think it gives enough of the techniques. And he has another book that includes the techniques, but this one, it's, it's great for theory and like big picture philosophy of how to approach art, especially in his painting way. I mean, his paintings are absolutely beautiful. Like, Take a look at some of these, right? Like, let's let's find one, one of his. He's gotten a bunch of rewards, like as a classical painter. I mean, this is just a beautiful piece right here, beautiful, beautiful piece. I mean, his paintings are pretty remarkable, and it's great to just just see how he comes up with his ideas. And that's a, look at this. What an amazing painting! And while he doesn't teach you step by step how to do that. Um, I do like that you can get into his head, which I think is very important when you study an artist. If you, if there's an artist out there that you want to study, I mean, if you can get into their minds, if you could understand their philosophy, their, what they find important, what they find unimportant, that's where I think the real power of uh, studying an artist comes from is when the artist has documented their ideas, their thoughts, their um, concepts so well, not just learning the tricks and the tips and techniques, those are great and everything, and, you know, those can take you very far, but if you can understand their philosophy, their approach, just be able to imagine the way they like to do things, I think that's where a lot of power in learning from your favorite artists is. And of course, Richard Schmidt was able to create this big book to tell you everything he knows about painting and more. So fantastic book. And there are some great tricks for beginners in there, but I wouldn't really recommend it for a beginner. Plus it's a, a um, Plus, it's a pretty big book. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner who still needs to like learn techniques and like you know learn how to pick up a pick up a um, a you know get all supplies together. But if it's somebody who's developing as an artist, I think this is a great book. So that is uh, it's by Richard Expanded Edition a la Prima Two by Richard Schmidt. So let's continue on with these books. I'm going to restack them here. We're going to restack these books because we're nearing, nearing the end of this review. Now, Color and Light. This is another great book. Color and Light, a guide for the realist painter, creator of Dinotopia, James Gurney. Honestly, I would say uh, that James Gurney is probably one of the modern masters that we have around. Uh, James Gurney. He wrote a couple books. I think his, this is Color and Light. The other one is uh, Realism. Imaginative Realism, I think, is his other book. So this is a fantastic, fantastic read. A guide for the realist painter James Gurney, creator of Dinotopia. And where this really comes in valuable is it does exactly the right job of helping you understand color theory and how light and objects interact. And it's really powerful to know these ideas, like how to draw light realistically around the object. Because when you can understand light, how light interacts with surfaces, then you can start to paint. Because really it just becomes about matching the, the, the value and the hue. So when you know these ideas, the whole idea of painting um, becomes less, less intimidating. And when you can be less intimidated by the subject matter that you're tackling as an artist, uh, you know, you just go after it and you can start to work from there. But James Gurney, definitely one of the modern masters, in my opinion. He's a great artist and he is constantly, constantly putting out new work and interesting ideas. And he came up with these books that are very informative that can teach you a lot about painting. And one great thing is that he doesn't use just, uh, he doesn't use oils primarily I, I know I, he does a lot of like wash now so you don't necessarily have to use oils like you could learn from him and do either you know watercolor or gouache or um, acrylic depending on what you what you prefer to use so 
James Gurney, obvious choice. He's a very well-known, very respected artist with a lot of great things. But, you know, definitely for the more creative approach and coming up with your own designs and colors and interactions and stuff. And he goes over that, too, in his other books as well. So great choice right there. Let's set this book aside. And next up, we've got oil painting for dummies. Really, really good choice. I was surprised. You know, most people get these, see these books and they're like, for dummies? What, do I want? I'm not a dummy. But I think this gives a great, I would compare this pretty much to the other one, uh, the, the court, oil painting course you've always wanted. But honestly, I think this is a fantastic, fantastic book. The only issue I have with it is because it's printed on paper rather than like a, like a thick um, painting a photo paper, I don't know how accurate these the paintings that are here, here are. Right? So some of these are paintings, a lot of them are drawing studies, but I can't really tell like how accurate these colors are when working with it. But as far as that goes, you know, tons of great exercises in here. This is much more technical. So, you know, if you're an artist and you want to learn some technical ideas, if you're just beginning and you want, or, you know, even if you've gotten into painting for a while, but, and you need some more exercise ideas or just want to like find ideas to tighten things up. Um, you know, whereas Richard Schmidt and uh, James Gurney, the previous two books that I mentioned, whereas they have like more, philosophical, how to approach painting, how to study light, uh, the interactions of light and dark and color. Um, oil painting for dummies is definitely much more technical. And I don't mean technical in a boring way, but like technical in a sense of how to quickly improve a painting, how to quickly make one, a lot of ideas, inspirational and things like that. So oil painting for dummies, very good skills book. I guess technical isn't the best word, but like skills based, right? If you want to develop better skills, find skills for better ideas, um, you know, how to, how to study art. Like this is so comprehensive, very comprehensive book. I think it's more, one of the most comprehensive oil painting books uh, that I've gone through thus far, as far as the teaching of it goes. And you know, the dummies, the, this company that makes dummies, books are all very well known for you know teaching skills in a very um, helpful way so there we go and this also has a full color step-by-step -step guide to the fundamentals of painting with oil so there we go great book great starter book there but again uh, you know I, like the other reads the other reads are like very good uh, tabletop coffee top reads but the, this is not this is really like hey I want to study art I want to learn how to oil paint and teach me so great book there craig stevens simple still life projects to help you master the basics the beginner's guide to oil painting this is probably one of my favorite ones that helped me come up with one of my favorite paintings which is just a paper bag and i would say that this is such a powerful book because when it comes to painting when it comes to anything right whether it be a sport or art or some type of communication skill or if it comes down to communications or sports art what else the work that you do the friendships that you make the creative pursuits that you have all of it really does come down to some of the basics there's this great story about um, a great basketball co player I can't remember which one I want to say Michael Jordan but I can't remember if it was him that had this interview, but there was an interview of a really uh, great basketball player. Let's just say Michael Jordan. Um, and it went like, you know, this was like the, the last few seconds or last few minutes of the final, of the final game or whatever. And whoever sh shot the basket was going to win the entire uh, the championship or whatever. And, you know, he was exhausted, as you can imagine, you know, that's a lot of time to be on your feet playing ball. You're exhausted. You've been playing for quite an entire season, so you're tired. And they asked Michael Jordan, you know, how did you keep up with your, um, how did you keep up with your energy? How did you, you know, make it to the very end? 
and still be able to perform at the top of the level. And he says, you know, my, I was definitely tired, just like everybody else. I am a human just like everybody else, but I just went back to the basics. You know, he dribble, his dribbling skills, his, his uh, shot skills, all of those things. He just went back to the basics and that helped him. So I, that's where I think this book is really powerful. Mastering the Basics. Craig Stevens is a teacher and this entire book is just still lifes. Still lifes of one-off simple objects. And while this, you know, while most people probably dream of creating like a masterwork or like, you know, something that's, that's like, you know, just this huge master epic masterpiece um, where I think that this book is just so powerful is it gets you to go to the basics, master the basics. And from there you can really grow and do pretty much anything that you desire uh, to paint. So with that said, I mean, things as simple as a lemon, as an apple, I mean, it sounds simple, but it's not as easy to make them look nice. Apple, a metal object, a, a very shiny Christmas ornament, the happy holidays, everybody. So that said, a shoe, like these are all just one-off objects. They don't, uh, they're not in like overly complicated to study. And he just gives a lot of great ideas. I think it's powerful when you can look at a simple object and find the beauty in an object and be able to capture it in a painting. So that's where I think the, the power in this book lies is to, um, you know, find that beauty in everyday objects. To find that reason to be creative from just an everyday object. So that's this book, Craig Stevens. I highly recommend this book. It's probably one of my, uh, my favorite ones. Um, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite ones. It doesn't, you know, it's not so complex that, you know, it's impossible to work with. It's not so complex, but it's just enough that you're like, hey, okay, let me do this project. Let me try this project. Let me try this project. And you get tons of ideas. There's ideas everywhere. And he definitely does a great job of going in depth into how to do it. So, you know, here's an example. Let me give an example, right? So this is somewhere in the late middle, middle of the book. So one of the final projects. It's the same exact process. He tells you exactly what you'll need, the colors, the palette, the knife, the brushes, the ruler, or whatever. He tells you exactly how he does it. He sketches it out, he draws it, he paints it, how he mixes his colors, how he starts to lay down all of his colors. And then there you go. So then the next project, right? So very simple explanations, kept very efficient, and you can learn very quickly how to paint with this book. And where I think it's why it's such a quick up process, like uphill or, or like a positively uphill, like why you get to learn so quickly through this book is it gets you like, hey, I can paint this jar and make it look nice. I can paint this toothbrush and make it look nice. Like you have every, all these objects around your house that you could paint. And there's just so many ideas in this book. And there's really like no reason not to go after it. You don't really need to come up, you know, spend months coming up with a composition. You really just need to um, get the skill and uh, find the inspiration. And this book gives a lot of it. So that said, and I, I would say that a lot of the skills that I've learned from here that I've applied have helped me, you know, because once you start doing these paintings of just everyday simple objects, you start to move on to bigger things and those those habits from basics just keep adding up. So that's very powerful. And these last three books, um, as I mentioned, the very first book, the very first book was a drawing on the right side of his brain. This is the drawings of Vincent van Gogh. Uh, this next book is the complete paintings van Gogh. And this is a Hiroshige from, from Tashin. So Hiroshige is a Japanese artist famous for woodblock prints from back in the day. So all of these books aren't necessarily painting skills books as much as they are, as much as the message is, if you're buying this for somebody, because it's the holidays, right? If you're gonna buy these books for somebody, the, the real message here is, isn't that these are the best books, right? But the idea, I mean, they're great books, they're fantastic books for me, 
but knowing who you're buying for and who their favorite favorite artists are. And if their favorite artist happens to be Vincent Van Gogh, then you know find them a good book about Vincent Van Gogh, whether they are using it to study painting or whether they're just using it to put on their coffee table top. I mean, this is a great gift, whether it's for the painter and artist in your life or whether it's for just your friend. Right? You just got to get them a book to, set that, to show that you care about them in some way. So books are great gifts in that manner. But for specifically, you know, for the artist that you're if you're getting a book for an artist or yourself, um, you know, there's an idea right here. Pick up a book from your favorite artist and really just go through their work, study it. And one day, you know, maybe you go to a museum and study it there. But uh, yeah, some of your favorite artists. Hiroshige, actually, I, I, I like him, but here's where I found him the most interesting. Wasn't, I, I didn't get this book because he was my favorite artist. I got this book uh, as a, just a random one-off book, actually. I was just curious about Japanese Japanese art, but I also found out that a lot of Vincent's inspirations for a lot of his works were from Japanese woodblock art, the originals, you know, somewhat flat and but but very interesting art. And Hiroshigo is one of those great artists. So that said, um, these are all of the books that I highly recommend for oil painters and the artists in your life. So all of these we've got, and we'll just do a quick review of them real quick. Drawing on the right side of the, the brain. Drawing on the right side of the brain. Let's see if I can actually make it appear. There we go. So you can actually see it now. Drawing on the right side of the brain by Betty Edwards. Next one, Great French Paintings. Again, this is that's more so about knowing the time period that you really like or that the person that you're buying a gift for really likes and getting that time period of books. This is, what's this next one? Uh, feel it, but I can't see it. Oh yeah, classical painting atelier by Julia Aristides. So classical painting atelier by Julia Aristides. Um, great techniques of the great masters. A la prima too. Craig Stevens. Simple. The beginner's guide to oil painting. Guide to the for realist painter James Gurney. Books by the. Fa fa the favorite artist of your artist in your life, whether it be you or somebody else. And with that said, um, these are the books. And happy book shopping, happy holidays, happy day. We'll be doing a live stream of actually painting in a little bit, but I just wanted to get this book review out there because these are some books that have been sitting on my shelf that I've been looking through. They've given a lot of value. I've gotten a lot of value out of them, and I hope that a lot of you can as well. So have a great day, and thanks for tuning in.